What's going on everybody? Welcome to part six of our Antics with Neural Networks tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to run through basically the, the opposite of what we've been doing so far where we're generating a classification based on a number input to now what we're going to do is we're going to have the actual classification being the input and the number is going to be generated. So basically what we want to be able to do is input a five and have the neural network draw us a five. So I'm going to go over the code uh, that I used to do just that. Really, this is all code that should look very familiar to you guys, just a few slight changes. So I don't really see any benefit in us writing it out. So um, for the input, basically, we're just doing 15 rows of um, encased in colons 20 versions of whatever the number is that we want for the label and I'll show that to you in a minute so it's basically going to look like this so the so the the training data is like this so it says hey draw me an 8 boom here's an 8 and then it's here's the input please draw me a 2 draw me another 2 a 9 and so on and our goal is to when when the user enters a 9 use this as the primer and then do your generation. And the hope is that based on this, this primer, it generates this. Now, the reason why I changed the classifier or the, the classification generator code is because actually as I was doing this tutorial and doing the write-up, I, I was working with the one hot array and then I flipped it around and said, okay, can we draw a number based on the one hot array because the classification didn't really work. And then I thought, well, it's probably really challenging when you have like a one hot array because eventually, you know, first of all, if you get that one hot array, you only have like one opportunity to get that number right, uh, especially in the classification. You only have one opportunity to get it right, whereas you have many opportunities if you give it something like this, like many, many rows basically of, of data. And I think the same is true when you're drawing something where if you just have the one one hot array or vector, or whatever you want to call it, um, as you begin to like slide your window down, because of the way that we've done this too, you can almost think of it as like, like think of it as like this window here. And as you slide it down, your window now for the generative model is like this. So at this point, like what if, what if at this point it just had one vector here, right? It would have to get that one vector right. And that one number that only like in that vector, there's only one tiny difference between the different classifications. And in my opinion, that was probably making it really challenging, I think, to learn. So anyways, that's when I started doing this. And then, as you saw in the beginning, I already knew that this would be successful as I was filming this. Obviously, I didn't know that was going to be successful at the time when I built this. Um, but as we've seen also with the classification generator, uh, that also, also seems to work or at least help. Now, this model's been trained for about 90,000 steps. So um, at least I want to let that other one, the classifier, train for the same amount. Anyway, that's the input data. This is the code to make it. Again, you can go to the text-based version of this tutorial to get it. Then we have the sample number drawer. This one's even more challenging for us to determine, you know, some sort of accuracy percentage because um, really you would need an MNIST classifier to classify the output, um, which you could totally do. Um, I just didn't really feel like doing it. I was just going to eyeball it. So Anyways, um, this is the code that I've written to actually just generate the number. So you just take the input. It's just straight up an input. The primer is empty right now for, you know, nothing that matters in the range of 15. We generate this same as we basically did it right here. Um, and then I'm actually going to just clear this like that. And then while true, we just start iterating through here now. Um, in this case, basically what we're trying to do, this is using a regular expression to attempt to find the drawn number. So it's just looking for instances where you have two brackets. So um, bracket number one, bracket number two, and then this is actually a regular expression. So, so take note, I'm sorry, this is the regular expression that we're hunting for. So take note of the backslash bracket versus no backslash bracket. Brackets a you know, part of a regular expression um, syntax. Now, um, so that's what we're doing. We're looking for two brackets followed by literally anything in between those two brackets. So again, um, in this case, these are encased by colons, but then the whole number is encased by two brackets and another two brackets. So our regular expression is hunting 
for that. Once it finds that, um, if it doesn't find that, it's going to actually just continue this loop. It's going to attempt to make another prediction. Um, but once it does find that, it's going to go ahead and break. It's going to print it out to the screen for us. And then we're going to convert it because obviously this can't be drawn in matplotlib. So just like we had to convert it to a very simplified and condensed array this way, we actually have to convert it back out um, to something that we can actually graph. So that's what we're doing here. And then we go ahead and just run an eval on it. Ooh, scary eval. And then um, m show, and then we show it. So that's that code there. And then I've actually already got it running here. It looks like I've hit some keys. Let's just see if a two works. So because sometimes there is no number, the regular expression doesn't find anything with two brackets, sometimes this takes a really long time. So one of the numbers I found that's really slow is a nine. Uh, a two, however, appears to be very, very quick. So nice. Uh, let's do, I don't know, a four. At least the first one was successful. Eventually, we're going to find one that is a mistake. Um, it does make mistakes. It draws some weird things sometimes. Uh, that's just, it's a generative model. That's what it's going to do. Uh, the uh, training window, I guess I should probably mention <laughs> what we did. Wow, this four is actually taking a while. Um, basically, I trained this. This was a sequence length of 800, and it was a 128 by 3. Um, whoa. Huh, I've never seen this error before. Image data can't convert to float. Huh. I wonder I wonder what was there. <laughs> I wish I uh, output what that was. Unless that was it above it. Nine? No. Yeah, that was it. Shoot. I wonder what didn't convert. It looked like it was actually going to draw us the number. <laughs> what a bummer. <laughs> Something was wrong, though. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. I don't know what would have caused that, to be honest. It looked like it was about right. I wish we could have had more more of a window there. Anyway, let's see if it can draw us a 4 this time. Apparently a 4 is a really challenging number. Maybe I should... Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe I should pause. All right, so um, yeah, so the 4 works awesome. Um, you get the idea. I could draw a billion other numbers, um, but I don't think I'm going to. So... From here, there's a few things we could do. One is I could continue training this model. I could also go further with um, MNIST data. So for example, there's EMNIST, which is actually all numbers and then all letters, upper and lower case. Uh, so we could do something like that. We could also just take it a little further. I was kind of thinking of doing something with imagery. So the first thing that came to my mind was like the cats versus dogs. So tell it, draw me a cat, and then it just draws a cat. I think that's going to be ultimately probably too challenging. Um, I'm going to kind of play around with pictures of cats and see if I threshold them and, and decrease their size significantly. If we can come to some sort of like a 28 by 28, it's probably too small after a threshold to really notice that something is a cat or a dog. Um, but something, maybe a 50 by 50, which is, you know, quite a bit larger. Um, but yeah, so, so I'm still going to try to figure out what I want to do there as far as continuing on with this, because this appears to me to be relatively solved, where you can have it draw you a unique number and all that. So anyways, that's pretty interesting to me. Like I said, I think it's pretty cool, because it's like always a new and unique number that it draws, which is just interesting um, to me. So anyways, um, I think that's it for now, and I'll probably... The next video, we'll probably have to wait a little bit because I'm going to let that other model train and finish and see if we can get the classification generator <laughs> to work as well. So using a generative model to do classification uh, is still kind of interesting to me. So anyways, uh, that's going to be it for now. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in another video.